But I know, morning Tober. I lied, lied. That's me, Lion Steve. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Yeah, no, on my last video I said that would be the last, probably, but I did say probably. I did. Anyway, I thought of something else that I really wanted to do for Inktober. I planned to do it and I just had not covered it. Uh, it's something that I do frequently and I've mentioned in some videos and maybe you picked up on it, but I've never done an episode on it. And that's using water soluble ink. When you draw and how you can use that to tone your drawings so we're going to get a little more in depth into that and a little more specific i'm going to do a little drawing and i'm going to show you what to look for and what to think about if you want to try this method so this really goes far beyond inktober it's just a great sketching tool uh, process that you can use and i hope you'll find this useful also i wanted to show off my inktober shirt i ordered this way back i think it was before inktober started and I only just got it a few days ago. So it gave me another excuse to wear this great shirt. I don't have to wait till next year. So Inktober is drawing to a close. Yeah, you working on your Halloween costume? Oh, cool. You don't think you're scary enough without it? Whoa, nice looking brain. It's a little small though, don't you think? Yeah, I agree, better than what you had. Anyway, on to sketching with water-soluble ink. All right, so exactly what are we talking about here? Well, yeah, um, most of the time when you're drawing with ink and you're using a wash, uh, you're looking for permanence. Um, that's what we talk about the most. The uh, Inktober stuff that I've been doing, and for most line and wash, like where you do color, watercolor, uh, I use something like this, a pi uh, fine liner, like this Statler pigment liner, or uh, brush pens, as I demonstrated in my um, pen and ink our Inktober supply video. I'll link to that up there. Some little brush pens or this this true brush pen. So that's what we're usually talking about and all of those are permanent. I really think I should take just a moment to talk about water soluble inks. Usually that's what something that you stay away from and as you can see here when I put water over it they're permanent. I mean I get just a tiny bit of tone but that's only because I probably didn't let it dry very long at all and some depends on the, the paper so anyway uh, permanent is is awesome and what you're normally looking for but what about water soluble pens do they have any use for uh, the sketch artist at all well definitely they do let's talk about fountain pens for a minute fountain pens usually have a cartridge that comes with a lot of them you can also get what's called a converter, which is just a fillable cartridge where you can fill it on your own with your own ink. Now, if you seek out a fountain pen ink that has some permanence, you can do that. But normally the cartridges that you get uh, with a fountain pen are water soluble. They're gonna run when you put water over them, okay? So that's what we're talking about. But for sketching, um, you can actually use that now, not all of them, and that's what we're going to get into in a, in a minute. This is a Faber-Castell Loom, really nice fountain pen. The cartridge that came with this pen is also water-soluble. But I started with fountain pens because I don't think they're the best choice, at least not with the cartridges that usually come with them. And here's why. So what we're talking about doing is drawing along and then going back over your drawing and using the ink to tone your drawing. Sort of the same principle that you have when you use uh, a watercolor pencil. Uh, but that's what happens with fountain pen, pen inks when you wet them. Not only does it loosen up the ink and spread it around and tone whatever it is you've drawn, but it also kind of obliterates your line. And that you don't want. Well, normally I like to use uh, gel pens uh, there's this Uniball Air. I'm not sure this is a gel pen. It might be. This Uniball Air is actually almost permanent. There's this Uniball Vision Elite. And this, which is my favorite detail pen, this is the uh, Pilot High Tech C. Now watch what happens. Put some water here. 
I'm getting tone, but my line is staying put. Huh? Isn't that cool? I get a little tone on the Uniball Air, but not as much. And the Uniball Air is kind of a bolder one, so I usually just use it to bolden up some of the lines. And that's what I recommend if you want to try this method. I'll have links down below. You can try other ones and see what you think, see how they do. Um, but I really like these for sketching and being able to tone my drawing. And still maintaining a nice line, uh, not obliterating my drawing once I've done it. Okay. Now there's another uh, thing to know. Um, once you've done your sketching and any of the parts that you've toned with water, once that dries, it sort of sets all the ink in. So you have that gray tone, but you could probably come back over that. Not probably, I know, because I've done it. You can come back over that with uh, watercolor. Of course, you'll have the effect of the gray under the color, but it won't actually mix with the paint itself. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Okay, I wanted to get my camera a little closer. One I forgot to mention is ballpoint pens. And this is another uh, case of just have to test it. Uh, ballpoint pens are great sketching tools. Uh, they tend to be a little more permanent. They don't loosen up much at all. But I just thought I'd mention them uh, in case you had a question about them. And pl please feel free to test any pens that you want to sketch with. These do tone just a very little bit, but most ballpoint pens are permanent to water. So again, just pointing back to gel pens, that's usually my choice for sketching when I want to be able to tone with the lines I put down. And I still don't want to get rid of my line. So let's do some drawing. All right, so I'm gonna do a little landscape which I've drawn out here in blue pencil. And I realize on camera you probably can't see that because I've used this non-photo blue. All right, so I'm just gonna start uh, laying in my main pen and ink line. Okay, I'm using a high-tech C pen, uh, Pilot high-tech C, which is an extremely fine, almost technical pen like a uh, gel pen. And I'll probably go back later with a Uniball Vision Elite for some heavier lines. But this is just establishing all the main shapes and outlines. I'm using a Stillman and Byrne Zeta sketchbook which is uh, one I really like uh, for pen and ink and ink and wash. It's very smooth. It's a hot press. It takes ink extremely well and it doesn't do too bad a job with watercolor. You know I think I said it in another video but it bears repeating here. Uh, pen and ink I know it's hard, I know it's uncomfortable for some people, um, but it will make you a better watercolor painter and that's uh, primarily what what my interest is, is watercolor. I, I love pen and ink, don't get me wrong, but it makes you a better renderer, helps you simplify things. Uh, the more you do it, you know, the more you practice it, and the better you get. It helps you simplify things, it helps you see things in high contrast and that's just valuable for uh, any kind of painting watercolor included a common beginner mistake is is to just paint in midtones and not get very contrasty and when you do pen and ink you got to think pretty heavily about exactly where you're going to put your your lines because it's so easy to overdo ink and just make it look like a one dark mess. I'm just continuing to go through and add edges, bold edges to uh, delineate some of these shapes and improve and increase the contrast where it's needed. I'm so glad so many of you have tried Inktober and have told me that you're doing it. And I love that so many of you are, are, are having fun and you're not real worried about your results. I know several of you told me you didn't think you were achieving very good results, but you were having fun. And I just, I love to hear that. Very common to not think that 
you're having really good results. Uh, it's more important though that you know you're learning something, you're having fun learning something, and you're just having fun doing the challenge. And several of you have told me that and I was really glad to hear that. Your joy in art is increased through knowledge and your knowledge is increased by pushing your comfort levels and getting outside of what you normally feel comfortable with and trying different things. So many things in art um, are aha moments, you know. I think improvement for me through the years has come in big steps. Uh, there has been times when I could say the improvement is gradual but I think for the most part um, like I'll work at something and work at something and be frustrated and be frustrated and then boom all of a sudden it's like ah breakthrough and a lot of times it just comes by doing things differently or trying different things trying things you haven't tried before uh, studying what other artists are doing and practice of course I increase my enjoyment by getting better. I'm adding a new wrinkle and dimension to my art. That's where the joy comes from me. I mean, sure, it's it's having something at the end that I'm proud of, but I think a lot of times too much emphasis is put on that in the beginning. Don't put so much emphasis in the beginning on having a finished piece that you're proud of. It's a really, really frustrating way to go. It really is. Put more emphasis on breakthroughs, on those aha moments. I hear from a lot of you that you're afraid to ruin a piece and you get so far and you do something that you like and then you're afraid to go any further because you, you might ruin it. And I so identify with that. I've had that same moment more times than I can count. But in the beginning, you know, as I've said many times, your failure is not a friend. It's an enemy. It keeps you from learning. And breakthroughs and learning is, is really, I think, where all the joy is. Alright, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I think I'm ready to tone and now we're getting into the sort of the meat of what this episode is about so it's really nothing more than just having a brush and now it's like watercoloring you could do this with color but what I'm doing it's like a, a water soluble graphite it's no different than that it's no different than watercolor pencil the difference is that with something like this gel pen uh, you won't totally obliterate your line so it has a similar effect to doing uh, India ink, diluted India ink washes over dried India ink. And I just usually want a damp brush. I'm, I've got a brush that's big enough to stay really damp for a while. Uh, if you use a really small brush, you know, you have to keep re-wetting it. I'm going to start in the darkest recesses where I want the darkest shading. You can see how uh, the washes are picking up ink from the line. It's just the coolest thing. And it's just as if I'm doing uh, an India diluted India ink wash. Now this is a synthetic. This is actually a fairly inexpensive synthetic. This is a Princeton Elite. This is a new brush that I've been trying. And I'm really, it's not that expensive. I think I got it on sale. It's one of their, their best synthetics though. It has a great point. I'm not afraid of ruining it. And by ruining it, you might want to keep, just like the, you were using uh, India ink, you want to keep your brush rinsed out. You know, in other words, uh, do some of this toning and then rinse it. So, you you know, you don't want ink drying in this brush if you can help it. So I don't have a sopping wet brush. I have a damp brush. And I got this sort of grass line back here. And then behind that, a tree line. I'm just going to bring in some tone to that grass line and up to the base of that tree line. I'm just going to continue to sort of stroke in and follow the grass pattern. I'm not going to tone every square inch of this. I only use this tone in places. 
These pens are performing well, as if they were made for this task. And I don't really think the makers of these pens had this in mind. But you know, what something was made for is not as important as what it'll do. All right, everybody, I'm going to stop right there. Just a technique I love. I will link to the pens down below in case you forgot what they were. So if you like ink and tone or ink and wash with ink, this is a great thing to give a try. Thank you everyone for watching. Appreciate it. Thanks for liking and thumbs upping and all that good stuff. Thank you so much patrons. Um, I do have a new video coming for the exclusive level very soon. Uh, it's another one of my October pieces. It is a watercolor line and wash. Uh, make sure you uh, keep your eye out for that. Still editing it. But thank you all patrons for your support. You guys are the best. And hope everyone has a happy and safe Halloween. And happy Inktober. And we will see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.